looks like I used 21 inches, 22.5, okay, by 17.75. the sleeve. My work for them. I mean the opposite of, well, English. Isn't that really... Okay, I'm leveling the sleeve. Hem. Making sure it's <laughs> parallel. Manhole? Or flush. Or in alignment. In perfect alignment. And you do that by selecting the t bottom points of the hem and um, going to arrange, go, align horizontally. And it'll make sure that all those points align perfectly across. Now the sleeve, it's 21.75 or 25, one or the other. And it was eight and a half on one side, eight and a half on the other side of the sleeve, which means the total was 17. So we want this sleeve to be sized up to 21.75 or 25, whichever one I chose, and then 17 inches wide. Come on, join me. Guys, I'm bathing with Jesus. Hey, you. 21.75. That's right. 13. Hey, you. Now you the main. Now we're deleting our source photos. Now you the main. You the main. Y'all the main. Why the main? Huh? You the way main. You the way main. Why one main? Why not more wow? Huh? I'm making sure all the points are smooth. <laughs> the paths meet up smoothly. Fixing the top of the hood. There's a little dip right there at the top point. I didn't do the, I didn't angle the curve as great as it should be. You the man, you the man. You the boy. And now I need to make the back. And then I will be extending the front and back piece. Okay, we should, we're going to make a copy of the front and alter it to be a back. There we go. Now the back um, just scoops an inch below the high point shoulder, the neckline. The back neckline scoops one inch below the high point shoulder. And I'll show you a little trick. I use with the um, sh square shape maker. Okay, so I'm letting you know that it's an inch of a dip. grab the square and I make it an inch tall so I know where I need to meet where the point needs to meet now we're just going to select the points and bring them up I'm holding my finger on the screen so it stays aligned with its original location we are we are and I probably should have made the back first before mirroring the second half of the piece. That way I would have known that I had a perfect, perfectly symmetrical scoop in the back. Now this still looks close enough. It's just more professional, I'd say, to do it on a half piece and then, you know, that guarantees that it'll be mirrored correctly. Now I'm putting it on top. I mean, yeah, 
make sure it looks good. And I believe now we may probably just throw some powder pieces around, waste some time. Okay, so I'm going to add notches. Um, I don't match notches when sewing. I'm just adding a notch, notches to this sleeve so that I can understand where the front is and where the back is. So one notch goes on the front side of the sleeve and two notches go on the back side of the sleeve. Normally you would have these notches on your sleeve piece and corresponding matching notches on your front bodice or your front panel. I mean, on your front and back panel. I very rarely use notches, so I'm just putting notches on here to signify front and back. Now I'm getting ready to, I believe I might walk some pieces or extend. I think we should go. Okay. You can legally. You well, I know as a fact I don't need to walk these shoulders because they uh, are duplicates of each other. Mm -hmm. However, I will need to have the shoulders connected when I'm walking the um, sleeve to the front and back. Now I'm about to walk the hoodie the hood of the hoodie to the front piece and I'm going to notch where the shoulder, where it meets at the shoulder. And then I lined it to the back. Now it should be a little over, the hood should be a little bigger because it overlaps in the front by about a quarter of an inch, not a quarter, maybe over a half inch. And I'm walking the sleeve here and it walked perfectly. Well, there was a little bit, it was a little bit bigger, but it stretches when you're attaching it to the sleeve hole. So sometimes it's okay for it to be bigger. It depends on the fabric. This fabric was very forgiving. So this was okay. Okay, now we're adding seam allowance. And this is gonna be fun because it's a simple way to do it. Although the program's not, is a little buggy. Just keep this in mind, might wanna write this down. 72 points equals one inch. 30, half of that is 36 points, and that's a half inch. And then half of that is 18 points, and that's a quarter inch. So these are a couple of the main seam allowances to remember. That way, well, you're gonna see in a second. So we're gonna start adding seam allowances to the hood first. Now you go to stroke, and that's where the points come in. So you hit 16 points, and that's a quarter of an inch, and you make sure that you have it on the outside of the line. So you might wanna replay that and see how I had it set up. Now we're doing, you need to go to path, outline stroke. That's how we get the that's how we're able to alter the um, seam allowance. So we got a quarter inch all the way around, but where this meets in the front, the hoodie, the part that goes around your face, this is actually 1.25 inches. So you can see we already have a quarter inch and I need to uh, add one more inch. So since I know these grid lines are an eighth of an inch, I need to add eight. I count eight of those. So now I know that this is 1.25 inches. And you'll see when I'm sewing why this is. A quarter of an inch is the um, seam allowance, and but then it folds back. Shoot, I just realized I messed up even though it still fit, huh? Very interesting. All right, we're gonna add seam allowance to the sleeve. Go to stroke, 0.25. Make sure it's the outside on the alignment. Outer, it's the outer part of the line. And then we want to 
outline stroke. So you go to path, ruler, path, outline stroke, and then we fill it with white. Now we take our direct select and we select the two bottom points of the sleeve of the wrist. And this is also going to go down 1.25 inches. We already have a quarter inch there, so we added another inch. So we pulled it down an inch onto the grid. And that is because we are going to attach an inch elastic and fold it under one time. All right, are we finally going to extend this crop? Okay, everything that's seam allowance, we're going to put away. Are we up now? Oh, so at this point, I believe I went to the mirror to measure exactly how long, where I wanted it to meet on my body. That's when I learned that it was I believe 24 inches. Okay, so now I'm making a measurement line of 24 inches so I know where I will be extending to. So now you want to take your direct select tool and select the bottom three points and extend it to where I'm holding my finger on the screen so that it maintains its path. Now we're gonna go do the other one. Putting it on top, I'm just gonna use it as its own example. Make sure you hit the direct select plus down here in the bottom left. That allows you to select multiple points. All right. Now we just need to add seam allowance. Quarter inch, so it's gonna be 36 points. I mean, I'm sorry, not 36. 18 is a quarter inch. Then we go to path. Select both path, outline stroke. Now we want to, there's a little bit of a glitch in here, if you can see on the bottom hem. I don't understand why it's, why it's doing that, but the program is not perfect, so could be something I did, could be something with the program. We select both and we want the lines to be black and the fill to be white, and that's the fill of the seam allowance, not the actual piece. And now I'm selecting the bottom of the hem. You see it's a bit of a mess down there that I don't know what happened, but it's still going to work. It's just, I probably wouldn't show a client this. I would definitely get this fixed. Now I want the bottom hem to be about an inch. Hold your finger on your screen and that'll help it stay aligned. It looks like we're going to do 1.25. Okay. I did end up sewing it under 1.25, so that works. Now we're doing it again for the bottom. Select both. You look at all the points it added. It's real messy. When we outline the stroke, for some reason, it's just got a little weird, but it's still going to work. I do have to do a little bit of finagling here. Yeah, so this one I experimented. I was like, well, what's going on here? This, is, this really was a waste of time. I should have just not done it. 
because see all this I gotta do. I think I'm gonna end up removing a bunch of these points because they're redundant and a waste of time. You select your pen and then you go to the pen with the minus button down in the bottom left options. And I just got rid of these redundant points. I get rid of the curvature and I'm just gonna go ahead and direct select the point and pull it over. Gotta do the same with the other side. I'm gonna have to work on figuring out what went wrong here because this really is a waste of time. I think it only took me 15 minutes maybe to copy the garment. And by the time I got to this point, maybe it was 20 to 25. It's pretty quick when you're not filming a video. Filming a video is a little bit time consuming. All right, so I believe those are about as good as I'm willing to make them. This is actually the first time I've ever taken photos of a hoodie and drafted a pattern from a copy of a, from a photo of a garment. And I'm happy to say that it turned out pretty much perfect other than I messed up a grommet. I didn't use the appropriate grommets, so one of them started coming out which is fine by me. Okay, and this is where I'm putting the grommet mark in. The grommet mark was 1.25 inches up. And I'm just putting a mark there. So let me know where I need to mark the hood for garment grommet placement. I ended up messing up pretty bad, so only one side got a grommet. Now I'm trying to set up my pattern pieces the most efficient way for printing on the paper. The paper uh, gets expensive. I, I think it's a roll, 100 feet for 60 bucks. Um, maybe not even that, maybe less than 100 feet, but it's, it, it goes fast. For example, this is gonna be a 100 inch roll 100 inch section, which is, you know, almost 10 feet. Less than 10 feet. Or more than 10 feet. I don't know. So I'm trying to get the most efficient layout. So I can see I've got space on the bottom and I can go ahead and shorten my canvas. 